from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Palo Alto for special two days of coverage of Google Next 2017. I'm John Furrier here in theCUBE. We have reporters and analysts on the ground. We're calling in and getting reaction on all the great news and of course, Google's uh, you know, march to the enterprise cloud really is the big story. Of course, they have their cloud. They've been powering with their infrastructure and have had great presence for powering their own stuff. Just like Amazon.com had at Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud now powering Google and others. Diane Green, new CEO, taking the reins, making things happen, we covered that news. And for an entrepreneurial perspective, we have Tarun uh, Takur, who's the co-founder and CEO of Datos.io, Datos.io, D-A-T-O-S dot I-O. Uh, former uh, entrepreneur at the data domain, been in the business, newly funded. Series A entre entrepreneur funded with True Ventures and Lightspeed. That is correct, John, thank um, you. Thank thanks you. for coming on. Tell us what you guys do first. Explain uh, what you guys as a company are doing. Absolutely. You're new to the scene. Here. Absolutely, no, I'd love to first uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, about Datos, I'll, I'll sort, of, sort of zoom out a little bit and, and if you really see what's really happening out in the industry. Uh, you know, our founding premise, both me and my co-founder, Prasenjit, uh, our, our founding principle is very simple. There are some transformative changes happening in the application era, right? I was just listening to Akash talk from SAP, and, and enterprise workloads are moving to the cloud, right? That's a, that was our founding premise, that not only do you not have those IoT workloads, these SaaS workloads, the real-time analytics workloads yeah. being born in the cloud, but you have all these traditional workloads that are moving as fast as they can to the cloud. Right, so if you, if you really look at that, that sort of transformative change, we have a very simple founding premise. Applications define the choice of the IT stack underneath it. What do we mean by that? The choice of the database, the choice of the storage, the choice of all the data management tooling around it, starting with protection, starting with governance, compliance, and so on and so forth, right? So if the application workloads are under disruption and they're moving to the cloud, the impact it has on the IT stack underneath this is phenomenal. So Tarun, you guys had a great write-up in the register, uh, Chris Miller, who's well known in the, in the stories, because we all follow him, a great guy. Um, and very fair, but he's all, he can be critical too, he's very snarky, we like, we like his columns. <laughs> he called you guys the Tesla of the backup world. What does he mean by that? Does he mean it like you have all the bells and whistles of a modern thing, or is, it, <laughs> is there a specific nuance to why he's no, calling you the Tesla of the backup world? No, this world? is excellent, John. You know, we are, Fortunate and we're honored, uh, you know, Chris, Chris gave Electric us. backup, I mean, what's <laughs> happening here? I mean, what does he mean by that? No, what's, no, what's Chris, the, you know, Chris couldn't, couldn't, you know, couldn't have, have done a, a, couldn't have given us a better privilege than what he gave. Uh, got a chance to host him in the, in the office, small office, much smaller than what you have here uh, in December. And, uh, you know, a 45 session, minute session became a two hour session. And really he dug into why the Tesla, and, and you know, essentially it goes back to John, you had, the traditional workloads running on your traditional databases, classical scale-up relational databases like Oracle and SQL, right? Now you're dealing with these next generation hyperscale distributed applications. Mm -hmm. IoT, real-time analytics, building on that theme, those are being deployed fundamentally on distributed architectures. Yeah. Your Apache Cassandra, your Amazon DynamoDB, your Google Spanner, now that we're talking in the context of Google mm -hmm. Cloud Next, right? When you look at those distributed architectures, there's so much fundamental shift. You don't run them on shared storage. You don't have media servers anymore in the cloud. It's all you have the edge. elastic compute. You have the edge out You there. have the edge computing. Given all those changes, you had to fundamentally rethink of backup. And that's essentially what we did. Just going back to Tesla, yep. Tesla was started with a fundamentally seminal architecture. So you thought this from the ground up. That's essentially one point. And the other one is that it's, it's modern in the sense of it's really taking advantage of the new architecture. That's absolutely right. You know, we, 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 when we started again back in June of 2014, um, you know, we really started with the end in mind, the 10 years, the next 10 years ahead of us, right? And the end in mind was, look, it's going to be distributed architectures. It's going to be your hyperscale applications, the web scale applications and you need to be able to understand data and protect it and recover it and manage it at, a, at that scale. Okay, so you guys are also a Google partner, so you have an interesting perspective. You're on the front lines. A Series A entrepreneur, you haven't cleared the runway yet. You still have to prove yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the game is just starting. You don't end it with the financing. That's just validation for the vision and the mission and get some good press so far from, Thank from, you. from Chris. Now as you execute, you have a partner in Google. What's your analysis of Google? And, and, and as someone who's close to them, certainly as an entrepreneur, you're, you're, you're nimble, you're fast, you understand the tech, you mentioned Spanner, 
understand our great horizontally scalable opportunity, but some of the enterprises might be a little slower. And they, and, and they have different uh, orientations. So help us understand what is Google doing? What's the main focus? No, absolutely. I'll give you, you know, I'll answer in three part series, right? Number one, we are, we are again a startup series, as you said. We have a lot ahead of us. It's, even though we've been at it for three years, it feels like yesterday. Right, <laughs> it's, it's a grind. The joy of the it's, grind. It is a grind, but you know, to the point of Google Cloud, you know, our, our, one of our key marquee customers, a Fortune 100 home improvement retailer, under NDA, I cannot take their name out of well, the respect. Well, register says uh, Home Depot. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I, I will let Chris. I let Chris uh, do the honor, but but you know, it's a Fortune 100 home improvement retailer, uh, John, and and you know, their line of business, their entire e-commerce platform, the CIO down has moved that entire platform migrated from DB2 to Google Cloud. It's not running on DB2 on Google Cloud platform, it's running all on a distributed massive scale. So did they sunset Apache DB2 or did they? They completely have completely migrated away from DB2. Okay. It's, a, it's part of the digital transformation journey Home Depot mm -hmm. is at. They are three years in, they have two more years to go. And as part of their digital transformation journey they're on, they, they are now running their e-commerce yeah. website, which think of you, know, you and I going to Thanksgiving and buying our home tools. And that application runs on a highly scalable Apache Cassandra database on Google Cloud. Now, second part, right? Going back to large scale enterprises, you know, Home Depot being how progressive they are, they understood cloud does not mean recoverability. Cloud gives me the scale, cloud gives me the economics, yeah, the cloud gives me the availability, but it doesn't give me the point in time. Mm -hmm. And I need myself to be covered against that what if moment. Mm -hmm. We have heard the Delta moments, we have heard the GitLab moments, we have heard Salesforce dot come down with that human error, yeah. right? You do not want to be in that position as a home. You mean Amazon account. went down? And Amazon went Amazon. down a lot. Yeah, yeah, Amazon went down. And if you read the analysis, the analysis was, yeah. we're sorry guys, there was a human error. Yeah. Somebody was meant to change this directory, yeah. he changed that directory. Now, so this is a whole new game. So the, one of the, th the fears that the enterprise have is, is that in a new architecture besides security, which is a huge issue, we're going to have another segment on that shortly, but is that um, I have to. I want to leverage the capabilities of the partner in the cloud because manageability, certain things, I don't want to build on my own. Exactly. And so right. I can see you guys being a new modern piece because the data piece is so important because I'm storing it at the edge. I'm not moving data around. Right. So there's no data in motion as much as it is on premise. Absolutely. Is that right. a big part of this? It, it is. You know, for, from a from a, I'll, I'll zoom out again a little bit. You know, from a CIO perspective, right? And we are we pitched this to about 100 plus CIOs so far. You know, from then it is truly, and I hate to use this word, but it's truly a multi-cloud world, John. They have invested in private clouds and an on-prem infrastructure that ain't going anywhere anytime soon. They are moving some of their SAP instances to a century link, hey, MSPs, the managed service providers. But they know as a CIO, mm -hmm. I have my application developers and I have my lines of businesses who and they have their operation fast, guys too. Who want to go as fast as they can. I'll come back to the operations in a second because you'll be you'll be very surprised to hear this. But again, from a CIO down, he wants to make his application developers go as fast as they can, mm -hmm. and he wants the lines of businesses to go open up the next applications for the center. Because that's top line revenue, right? That's there. top line revenue, there yeah. you go. So, <laughs> so they want scale, they want agility, but they don't want to sacrifice you know, that insurance piece, mm -hmm. right? Going back to the IT ops and the dev ops and the classical ops, you're, you know, you'll be surprised. We've been working with this team. Our lead in into Fortune 100, home improvement retailer, was a line of business but right now mm -hmm. it's all about their core IT team. Their IT ops team, the database admins, the database ops people, they are the ones who are really running this product day to day, day in and day out, and scaling it and using it at, at, at the pace they need What's to. What's the big misconception, if you could point to, about Google? Because one of the things we're trying to surface is that Amazon and, and, and Google, it's not apples to apples comparisons, they're different clouds, um, and, and it is multi-cloud, I'll get you to that question today, but, but, but we'll get that in a second, your definition of what that means. But, <laughs> but for now, what is the big misconception in your mind? People that might uh, misconstrue with Google? No, I, I, you know, that's a great question, John, and I was hearing uh, your previous, uh, previous interview with, with Akash, and again, you know, I'll give you a partner-centric view, right? A young startup uh, built something disruptive for, the, for, for that platform. Uh, you know, we worked, we got Amazon as the first platform. We have mm -hmm. about, you know, a good set of customers running on, on Amazon. And then, of course, this home improvement retailer took us to Google Cloud. Hey guys, if you want to work with us, you have to support Google Cloud. We went to Google Cloud, and the amount of pull that we got from Google Cloud folks to make it happen in less than three months was phenomenal. They didn't stop at that. They brought their solution architect team, Google Cloud, wrote a paper about Datos, their team, and posted it on their website. How to use Datos on Google Cloud. Fascinating. Amazon has never done that. Yep. It again speaks to, if you saw all the announcements that mm -hmm. came out yesterday, 
Google sort of well, Google's partnering. Significant Google's, Google's partnering. One of the things that came out of today's news that has, um, has been hasn't been teased out is that Diane Green said on the keynote, "We, I like partnering." There she used go. the word "I like partnering." No, she's smart. Meaning Google, she and she has that on. DNA. She's from VMware. She knows the the Valley game. She understands ecosystems. Right. Um, she also likes to work on some cool stuff, which could be a, a you know <laughs> double edged sword. She's always been innovating. <laughs> no, but the thing um, is, she's but Google has the tech. Right. And she knows enterprise, so they're marching down that road. Right. What areas would you say Google needs to sharpen up a little bit to kind of move faster on? I mean, obviously there's no critique on them. They're, just, they're pedaling as fast as they can, but in the areas that you, you think they should work on, is it security, is it the data side? What are the things that you think they got to pedal a little faster? You on? know, I, I, would, I would definitely start with, with enterprise's touch. I think they need to really sort of amp up the game around, around enterprise. You know, people. You mean the, the people, the process, the people, the processes, the onboarding, the deployment, giving them the blue blue templates, giving them the reference architectures, yeah. giving them hand holding them a little bit, right? Yeah. And and I think that'll go the basic a long enterprise ways. motions. Yes, you need that, right? You are a cloud that doesn't mean my database guy is not going to need the help yeah. of a Google Cloud admin to help me onboard. Yeah, they need that ramp yeah. up. From their point on, they build phenomenal scalable services. Right, and yeah. that's and you see, yeah. Snap invested two billion dollars in Google Cloud. They, you know, they understand that. And they, Amazon's got the other half, but underlining yeah. infrastructure is there. No, but this is the thing. The, the problem that, that well, the problem Help is that the problem is that there's two there's two perspectives. Of what we see, one is people want to run like Google, right, in the sense of how they're scaling, but not everyone has Google like infrastructure. That is correct. So I think Google correct. has to kind of. They won the developers in my mind, they get, a, they get an A plus there right. with open source, right. what they're doing with Kubernetes and whatnot. Right. The operational orientation is something they got to work on. No, they absolutely SLAs knows. are more important than price. <laughs> the management, the orchestration yeah. piece, you know, giving them the visibility, you know, letting them come on and come off and things, and you know, going back to your multi-cloud. I'll tell you again, the same customer took us to a use case which is so fascinating, John. They want on-prem backup and recovery. Remember, protection is the Trojan horse. Yeah. Protection, it all starts yeah. with protection. It's always one of those things that's be, always been front and center. You saw that. It used to be kind of a throwaway thing. Oh, we got, oh, what about backup? Oh, we didn't factor in the design. Now it's front and center. Certainly cloud, it's going to be impacted because data's everywhere. Data's, data's going to be highly frictionless. That's correct. Um, so, okay, question and final question on, the, on this piece before we talk about what you guys are doing. What does multi-cloud mean? Or two, two questions. What is the definition of multi-cloud? Right. And what does cloud native mean to you? <laughs> to find those terms. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, you know, those two, two terms are very, very close to us. So multi-cloud, I'll begin with that. You know, it'll give you a customer use case that'll hopefully ground the conversation. A multi-cloud essentially means from a customer perspective, I'm going to run on-prem infrastructure. I want to be able to recover or manage that data in the cloud. I'm not, I don't want to make multiple copies. I don't want to duplicate data. I want to be able to recover a version of that data in the cloud. Why? Because I have my application developers who want to test dev. I want my DR to be in a different cloud. I do not want to put my, all my eggs in one basket. So again, it is truly, this is a- It's a diversity issue. It is. And they want multiple use cases to be spread across clouds. Some clouds have strength in DR, some clouds like Amazon mm -hmm. have strength in orchestration and onboarding, and some, strengths, some cloud platforms like Google Cloud have strengths in, mm -hmm. hey, you can bring your application developers and you don't need to worry about retail, right? Yeah. Some of the retailers like SAP, like Gap, like Safeway, like uh, eBay, you know, those guys will hesitate to going to Amazon because they know Amazon at the heart is a retail business, right? So yeah, so conflict there. Yeah, uh, now cloud native, business. define cloud native. You know, cloud native to, to us, you know, is, is look, you have, you have an Oracle, right? Running that database natively within the services of the cloud, right? For example, take Amazon DynamoDB. It's a beautiful example of a cloud native service. You don't run DynamoDB on-prem. It was built fundamentally for the cloud. Cloud Spanner, another example of cloud native. Right? It, is, it is built for that infrastructure, mm -hmm. for ground up, and has been nurtured for the last 10 years for the elastic infrastructure. Right? All right, Tarun, so, great to have you on. Quick plug for what you guys are doing. What's next? You got the Series A, you're getting customers, you got a big uh, customer you can't talk about, <laughs> but it's in the register <laughs> article, Home Depot. Um, what are the things you working on? What's the key priority? Oh, you. Hiring, you got some new announcements coming up, I hear, rumor, rumor mill, I won't say who they are, but <laughs> you're partnering. What's the key focus? What's your key objective? No, you know, we, we want to stay focused on building, building, you know, as you early on said, it's, it is still, it's still early, right, for us. We, we want to stay focused on getting customer acquisition, customer momentum, deploying those customers, making them happy customers, having them become referenceable customers mm -hmm. for us. And of course, you know, the next big focus for me personally is going to be bringing some of the people in the team, mm -hmm. you know, some of the people who can help me scale, who can help scale the company. Who engineering, can engineering, business. Engineering, marketing, business development, you know, sales, go to market. So that's going to be second period of focus. And third, uh, you know, and, and again, you'll, you'll hear the announcement coming out very quickly. We're going to be partnering with some of the leading, leading uh, enterprise uh, infrastructure companies, uh, both on the enterprise traditional storage companies yeah. and 
um, some of the leading, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. But and your True Ventures is, the, is a seed investor in Lightspeed on the Series Lightspeed, A. Lightspeed. Did True come Super. in on the Series A with that? Absolutely. Because they tend to fall. They don't they're, they're, leave you hanging. Yeah, they Puneet, get Puneet, great. Is, Puneet is excellent. I love yeah, them. I yeah, love John Callahan's company's got great stuff. And they have some great eggs. They had Fitbit and they got a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah, no, they're pure, excellent, excellent pro entrepreneur people. Yeah, right? yeah. They're, well, they're great to work with those boys. High integrity, right. great people. Terman, thanks for coming on and sharing the entrepreneurial perspective, the innovation perspective. And certainly as a Google partner, great to have your reaction and analysis. Thank it's you. the Q bringing you all the action from Google Next here in our studio. More Google Next coverage after this short break.